Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, let's take a look at the market because today Bitcoin crossed over $57,000 multiple times. Right now, it's just below $57,000 and the altcoins continue to look strong. Ethereum at $3,250, BNB at $395, Solana at about $108, XRP just over $0.58, cents, Cardano just over $0.62, cents, Avalanche at $39, and Doge in the top 10 at uh, just over $0.09. Cents. So everyone's waiting to see what is Bitcoin going to do next? Is it going to go higher? Or as I tweeted out today, uh, potentially it could have hit a rejection zone at the $57,000 price point. So we'll have to wait and see. There are no guarantees here. We have to wait and see uh, if it's going to go higher. Some analysts are predicting it can go to 60 or 62,000 and that's when it rejects and goes down and tests. Some are saying, this is a move to new all-time highs. It's going to hit new all-time highs by the halving. Look, I hope so. I would love for Bitcoin to keep running up. In fact, if Bitcoin can go to $100,000 plus by the halving, I will be a very happy investor, folks, because I have Bitcoin. I'm looking to start taking profits at the $90,000 price point and cashing out and using that fiat currency to uh, pay off debt and to spend and buy things and invest in other assets as well. So please, I'm giving, I'm sharing all these details so people understand, because sometimes when you say things like, oh, you know, I think it's the price is topped out here, people get triggered, they get angry, right? Like, oh, how could you say that? And it's like, well, we have to look at both the bullish and the bearish scenarios if we're honest with ourselves, right? We don't want to be in an echo chamber and we want to look at all things as investors, be uh, educated and understand all the scenarios that could play out. So we'll see. Uh, here's a chart I tweeted out from Alessio Rastani, who has a YouTube channel and is a great analyst. And he highlighted in his chart that Bitcoin is up 78% from the bottom of December 2022 and that potentially there's a resistance here at 57,000. But look, Bitcoin could blast through that. So please understand where I'm coming from. Um, I am not buying Bitcoin right here. I Essentially, I'm looking to take profits, like I said, and starting at $90,000. I did take some profits around 50 k because that was the crypto or the Bitcoin I bought in December 2022 at $16,000, $17,000. So it made a nice uh, return there. And I took profits on some other altcoins as well. But the great thing is, folks, as I've said, if you don't hold Bitcoin, you just hold altcoins, you want Bitcoin to go as high as possible because we've seen the data has shown the liquidity will flow from Bitcoin down to the altcoins. Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats. So all emotions and feelings aside, these are the facts. And in fact, I am looking for XRP, which has been a laggard. <laughs> But for so far, for the alts popping off, we've seen a lot of alts have been pumping, right? And XRP hasn't done anything. It's kind of boring right now. But I'm looking at the charts. I'm also looking at other analysts' work, like a blockchain backer and so forth. And the charts look like XRP is ready to pump. And I think that's going to come around the corner in full transparency outside of my long-term hold bags. Now, the, the, the XRP I have in a hardware wallet that I'm not touching right now until new all-time highs I took a nice position last night. I bought some XRP at 55 cents and I have my limit sell order at $1.35 with stop losses set, of course. So I tweeted out about this. Um, I think the liquidity is going to flow down. Now, this is not financial advice. I'm just being transparent and sharing how I make money in the market. You have to go on that educational journey and learn how to read the charts. You know, it's one thing for someone to tell you nice stories and sometimes theories and all these things, right? Oh, this coin's going to do this because of this, then blah, 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 blah. But you got to understand the charts. That's a big part of understanding how to make money in this market. So you can divide your strategy like I'm doing, have a long-term hold bag that's not being touched right now because we're waiting for new highs and you can swing trade. Now, with swing trading, you're buying spot, meaning you're not using leverage. So there's uh, less risk. And you may say, Tony, but what if it doesn't go to $1.35? Great question. That's where, uh, if that's the case, this just goes into my long-term hold back. So I don't lose. Now, obviously, 
you only invest what you're willing to lose because that's how you have to approach investing. You don't put your life savings and your retirement account into it, is right? Obviously. So be smart, but also learn how to use the charts. And this is how I've been making money. And maybe I'll drop like 20 to 30K on a coin, swing trade it, walk away when my money doubled. So uh, that's how I am making money in this market, in addition to my long-term hold bag. So uh, I think XRP, folks, uh, ready to go if, with the Fibonacci um, a model on here. You know, we could see at the 618, uh, once again, $1.35. So that's where I put my sell target at. That's my strategy. Like I said, not financial advice. Please do your own research. Now, something I want to highlight, and this is more for the new people entering the market, because I want to make sure you guys don't get wrecked and I, you learn from my mistakes in the past. Today, Michael Saylor, who I have a lot of respect for, I respect what the man has done. I don't hate him or anything like that. But he tweeted out, you do not sell your Bitcoin. Folks, that's not right. Of course, as a human being with freedoms, you can do whatever the hell you want. But a multimillionaire telling you not to sell an asset just be careful, okay? Watch out for things like this. Here's what I tweeted out. Folks, I will always keep it real with you. I have a lot of respect for Michael and what he has done, but telling someone to never sell an asset is disingenuous as Michael was already a multimillionaire before buying Bitcoin. The average person looking to invest in Bitcoin and altcoins should not operate like Michael. You should follow investment principles and buy low and sell high. Take the money you make uh, from your trades, your profits, and eliminate debt and give yourself financial freedom. You can, of course, reinvest some of your profits to buy back into Bitcoin when it's in the bear market. So uh, I am not subscribing to Michael Sayer and never selling my assets. No, I have a, a goal. I have a plan. And I want to pay off my mortgage um, and mortgages because <laughs> I have multiple properties. Um, and then, you know, provide for my family. I can't do that by just holding Bitcoin forever, right? I don't have the financial instruments that Michael Saylor does with MicroStrategy and what they're able to do with the stocks, right? The Bitcoin can sit in my portfolio and rise up in the bull market and drop in the bear market, and I'm sitting there. My money is stuck, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I've often stated on this podcast that I have some Bitcoin I'm never selling, but that's because I plan to give it to my daughter. But the majority of my coins, I am selling at the euphoria phase. As I've said many times, I'm here to make money. I believe in the tech and the adoption of it. But I'm here to, of course, get myself more financial freedom. And that is paying off debt and diversifying, putting uh, you know cash into real estate properties and other things, right? So please understand where I'm coming from. And please, those of you who are new, when you see stuff like this, even from the biggest names in the market, you know, go back to logic, go back to investment principles, which have worked and are tried and true. Now, let's highlight some coins that are trending on social media via Santiment, which is the analytics and metrics platform that gives you tons of data. Um, it's Santiment.net, and they updated the data 19 minutes ago. And folks, Pepe, the meme coin, is trending significantly on social media with a lot of positive sentiment. And Bitcoin is at second, which makes sense. Bitcoin was pumping like crazy today. Uh, Tata Network uh, also coming in at third here. Floki, another meme coin. So it looks like these meme coins are starting to pop off. Is at fifth. Uh, Pyth Network, I've never heard of that, is at sixth. Um, Dog Whiff Hat. Oh, God, another meme coin. <laughs> meme coins are going crazy. The liquidity is flowing down to them, right? This is why I'm anticipating XRP. Look, XRP is not a meme coin, but the point is the liquidity is making its its way uh, through the market to different coins. Um, you got here at number seven, Ontology, uh, AMP at number eight, Portal at number nine, and Stacks. I actually have a little bit of Stacks uh, coins at uh, number 10. So that's your top social media trending coins. Most of them for them uh, have positive sentiment, none really having huge negative sentiment. Um, and obviously you got the neutral as, as part of that, but interesting data. Now, as far as developer activity over the past 30 days, internet computers still leading, but look at this, Cardano bumped up to number two spots. So a lot of uh, development activity happening in Cardano. And once again, I shared this data because Knowledge is power. We've seen a high correlation between dev activity and the price of certain coins. It's not the only factor, obviously, but it is one of the metrics you have to look at. Polkadot coming in at number three, Kus Kusama at number four, Status, I've actually never heard of that, at number five, 
Hedera, HBARD, I hold that in my portfolio. Number six, Optimism. And number seven, Chainlink, which I'm bullish on. I have it in my portfolio. And number eight, Ethereum at number nine, Cosmos at number 10, uh, Aptos at 11, and Sue at 12. So some interesting data here, folks, and the building continues. Now, let's jump into some crypto news. Kraken preps for new crypto entrance with institutional focus offering. So we are seeing crypto exchanges around the globe are expanding, building new products and services and expanding their global footprint. And obviously everyone wants to get the largest share of the pie and grab as much market share as possible. So the company's new institutional brand was designed to pull existing Kraken offerings into one place for clients, according to Tim Oglivy global head of Kraken's institutional business. Such services include the company's spot exchange as well as, as its derivatives trading, qualified custody, and indices via Kraken subsidiary CF benchmarks. Here's a quote. The diversification of the institutional market to include more types of asset managers makes this a timely development, particularly as the institutional adoption of crypto is expected to grow rapidly. Folks, institutions, are lining up and you know the ETFs the bitcoin ETFs were a big draw we're seeing the inflows and the volumes uh going up significantly and as Gary Gensler and the SEC continue to lose in court, I think more of these institutional investors uh, are getting more bullish because they see the regulator is off the mark here and Congress has some bills in the House um, as well as the Senate. And uh, we're headed on the right path to where we're going to get regulations. It's just going to take time. But a lot of the fear and, and stigma uh, is dying away. And, and these institutional investors see the biggest names like BlackRock and Fidelity here and they, everybody's lining up now. The line is growing around the block to jump into the market. Now, speaking of Kraken, we all know that Kraken is suing the SEC, and the SEC is, of course, suing them, right? Well, uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, which is a crypto advocacy group, they have filed an amicus curiae brief um, in the SEC versus Kraken case. They said, our goal is to end the SEC's attempt to regulate the digital asset industry without legislative authority. Perry Ann Boring, the founder of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, said, it's time to end the SEC's regulation by enforcement of the digital asset industry. We're proud to back Kraken in this case. So this is great. We got to come together as an industry, take the gloves off and go after the bully that is Gary Genser, or as I would like to call him, a scumbag regulator. And folks, uh, some people thought, uh, you know, it was hyperbole that I was saying that, but just look at what this man has been doing. Look at his history and what he's doing now and his close ties to Elizabeth Warren. Now, before we go further, quick word from our sponsor, and that is VeChain. VeChain is one of the top layer one enterprise grade blockchains out there. They are scalable. They are fast, energy efficient. And they are building some very cool things for Web3. And they're working with some very large brands, folks, such as Givenchy, the Boston Consulting Group. Uh, you got BMW. You got Walmart China and uh, a whole bunch of companies. You can go to their website, vchain.org, to learn more about this. And when you got big brands looking to work with you, you're doing something right. PwC is also uh, uh, working with them, Sam's Club as well. So VeChain uh, has been around for a while. I hold the VET token. I've been invested in this project since 2018. Many of you know, uh, I'm, you know, if you've been subscribed, I've been holding the VET token for a long time because I believe in it. I believe in what they're doing and I see the potential here. And uh, I, this is why I asked them to become a sponsor because I believe in the project and uh, they're doing some great things. So if you'd like to learn more about VeChain, check out the link in the description. Go learn about this amazing project. Now, folks, we got Elizabeth Warren today was interviewed by Bloomberg. And man, she is a professional liar. <laughs> folks, she said, I've been trying to work with the crypto industry and I don't know why they don't want to work with me. I just want to make sure they are regulated the same way the banks are. What a liar. She's been trying to work with the industry. She has been putting out hit pieces on the industry using false information. You all remember the Wall Street Journal article, right? Did she ever come out and apologize when that was debunked by the Treasury? No. Did she ever retract anything? No. Uh, when she was invited by, I believe it was the Digital Chamber of Commerce or the Blockchain Associations, one of those, to come and meet with the industry, meet you know, along with other politicians who were there, members of Congress. Did she show up? No. Folks, but here's, here's what a lot of people have been saying. 
And I'll share actually, you know what? Let me let me share what Ryan Selkis had to say. I often agree with him uh, when it comes to Gary Genser and Elizabeth Warren. He says, Liz Warren is a shameless liar. Good news. She's lying about engaging with the crypto industry because she knows the jig is up and we're coming after all of her vulnerable friends in the Senate. Too late, Senator. And of course, I think the, the, the change in her tone saying she's trying to work with us is because John Deaton is on her ass, right? John, she's scared. We've seen the amount of emails she's been se uh, sending out ask, begging for donations and asking her fellow Democrats to come in to help her against a guy who has no political experience, a guy who's not part of the political machine. He doesn't have a war chest like Elizabeth Warren, right? Who's worth um, hundreds of millions of dollars. So it's amazing. She knows because the facts are not on her side. Uh, the Democrats overall are facing a lot of headwinds with the economy, the border, and much more. And John is a straight shooter. He's a fighter. So he's not going to put up with her lies and he's going to tell it like it is. He's not going to give political talk, right? Many politicians, you know, they often give this uh, political talk and it's not the truth. They skirt around the details and the facts. John's not going to do that. So she's scared. She knows she's in for a fight. And uh, it's unbelievable the length she would go to, you know, just lying straight up that she's been trying to work with the industry. Unbelievable lie. Now, let's move ahead. We got news around Uniswap. So Uniswap releases new tools for swappers. Uniswap aims to become a complete platform for swapping following its, its latest product releases. These new releases include a Uniswap extension tool, a function for limit orders on its web app, and a new data and insights web page. Uniswap is currently the largest decentralized exchange by total value locked according to DeFi Llama Uniswap version 3. For example, it boasts a TVL of $3.044 billion. Wow. So I don't hold uh, the Uniswap token um, and I don't haven't used Uniswap as a decentralized exchange, but obviously a lot of people do. But uh, it looks like they're trying to make improvements and add new features and so forth. So more power to them. Um, I hope they are able to survive the regulatory hurdles that we ha are going to face because um, while I do believe crypto regulations are coming, I think DeFi and decentralized exchanges are going to be a hard thing. The governments may come down very hard, but we, you know, we'll, I think we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. So hopefully they're able to survive the rough waters, you know, of the, the regulations that are coming. Now, many of you know I hold the Flare token. I delegate. I participated in the XRP snapshot in December 2020, so I got a, a lot of Flare, and I keep getting the distributions, of course. Well, folks, something very interesting. Dan Hell, who I, I do consider a friend, you know, he's uh, a Bitcoin OG. Dan has been here a long time. He worked at Kraken Exchange at one point. And here the Flare folks said, excited to have Dan Hell, Bitcoin OG and GP at uh, Asymmetric hosts our Flare fireside chat. Amazing that a Bitcoin OG is participating. And of course, Flare is looking to expand all types of DeFi capabilities around different assets, including Bitcoin. So I love it. I love it. And, you know, they're also going to have uh, Nalin Mittal, Web3 product lead at Google Cloud. So uh, Flare is doing big things. I am bullish on the Flare token. Uh, and uh, once again, I hold it in my portfolio. So I think it, it's going to do well this bull market cycle. They've got a lot of things uh, in the works and a lot of things they're building. And uh, when you are enabling features for other assets, that's going to bring in, once again, all those uh, developers and different people because they're going to want to work with you if you're you know, building something positive that helps boost their ecosystem and their assets. So I think this is great. Now, speaking of Bitcoin, crypto miners continue to sprint for hash rate in lead up to the halving. Riot platforms bought 31,500 more mining machines while CleanSpark has begun operating in Mississippi. Folks, the Bitcoin halving is coming up. For those of you who don't know, the mining reward gets cut in half, so there's going to be less Bitcoin in the market, and the difficulty rate to mine increases. So everyone's going to try to mine as many Bitcoin as possible ahead of this event. And uh, that's the, you know, one of the beautiful parts of Bitcoin is that it is deflationary and it's algorithmic. And um, those who can participate and earn Bitcoin, uh, 
then it's up it's yours if you want and you are able to do it so great to see that these uh, uh miners are, are ramping up hot eight which is another bitcoin miner to deploy bitcoin reserves in new treasury st uh, strategy hot eight also announced it broke ground on a texas mining site so we're just seeing amazing expansion and uh you look there's incredible demand for bitcoin now because of the etfs and you got all of wall street uh these guys buying up blackrock fidelity and all these guys are just buying and buying and buying so uh if you're a bitcoin miner good times are ahead right and many of these bitcoin miners are all, have also gone public now let's talk about ethereum the ethereum foundation gives denkun if i'm saying that right upgrade and activation time on march 13th denkun was activated on all test nets a blog post on Tuesday said. So two years after its ETH Denver inception, dozens of testing calls and devnets later, Proto Dank sharding ooh, is finally going live on mainnet. The Ethereum Foundation said Dencon will be activated on the Ethereum mainnet on March 13 at Epoch 269568. The blog post added, stakers will need to update their beacon nodes and validator clients to be compatible with the upgrade. The upgrade was run successfully on the Holski uh, testnet earlier this month. It previously ran on the Gorli and Sepolia testnets. So folks, uh, we are seeing expansion of Bitcoin mining. Ethereum is releasing updates. A lot of blockchains out there continue to build and do their thing. So exciting times. All of these things will lead to more adoption. And of course, more adoption, uh, certainly higher valuations of those blockchains and their native tokens. So I'm excited, folks. This bull market's going to be epic. And uh, I, am, I am ready for new all-time highs. I'm sure many of you have your cash out plan and what you want to do with that money. Um, and obviously it's important to take profits. Now, if you're in a financial situation where you don't need to take profits, then God bless you, you know, uh, and you can keep holding and you want to keep holding to when the price goes down in the bear mark, go for it. It's, it's your decision, but just don't, like I said at the beginning, don't let some rich guy come and tell you don't never sell your assets, right? Like Michael Saylor. And once again, I'm not hating on Michael Saylor, but uh, I think he's a little bit outlandish there, you know, by saying that. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Also, please be sure to check out our other sponsor, which is Uphold, one of the top crypto exchanges. You can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. Folks, you can also trade precious metals on this platform. They're available in over 150 countries and they have proof of reserves. They don't commingle or lend out your funds. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, check out the link. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you all later.